Hello, everyone. Welcome to Backyard Musings, broadcasting live from Apple Valley. I am Steve. And I'm Scott. Thank you so much for joining us today. Stanford researchers have uncovered a new material, niobium phosphide, that surpasses copper in electrical conductivity when fashioned into ultra-thin films. This breakthrough could revolutionize the efficiency and performance of future electronics by alleviating the limitations posed by traditional metal wires and nanoscale circuits. Would you like to know more? Okay, so as computer chips become even smaller and more complex, the ultra-thin metallic wires that trans transmit electrical signals within them are emerging as a critical uh, bottleneck. Traditional wi metal wires like copper uh, lose their efficiency at conducting electricity as they become thinner, ultimately restricting the size, performance, and energy efficiency of nanoscale electronics. In recent or in research published on January 3rd in the journal Science, Stanford scientists demonstrated that niobium phosphide uh, outperforms copper in conducting electricity when used in films just a few atoms thick. So that's not very thin, right? Or not. All right. That's crazy they can make those. Yeah, exactly. Um, these ultra thin niobium phosphide. Uh, films can be also be created at low temperatures, making them compatible with current chip manufacturing processes. This breakthrough could pave the way for more powerful and energy efficient electronics in the future. So, yeah, longer battery life if you have more efficiency. Yeah. Okay. Quote: We are breaking a fundamental bottleneck of traditional materials like copper," said Asser Intasar Khan, who received his doctorate from Stanford, is now a visiting postdoctoral scholar and first author on the paper. Our niobium phosphide conductors show that it's possible to send faster, more efficient signals through ultra-thin wires. This could improve the energy efficiency of future chips, and even small gains add up when many chips are used, such as in the massive data centers that store and process information today. Niobium phosphide is what researchers call a topological semi-metal. Uh, which means that the whole material can conduct electricity, but it, it, its outer surfaces are more conductive than the middle. Uh, as a film of niobium phosphide gets thinner, the middle region shrinks, but its surfaces stay the same, allowing the surfaces to contribute to a greater share to the flow of electricity and the materials as a whole to become a better conductor. Traditional metals like copper or other hand or on the other hand, become worse at conducting electricity once they are thinner than about 15 nanometers. I have no idea how thick is a nanometer. Pretty, pretty thin. Pretty small. Pretty small. I'm just trying to figure out how they're saying the outside of the wire versus the inside of the wire. When we're talking, this is so small. I don't know what the difference is. Um, well, and I, I, conductivity. I don't know. Yeah, and when they when they when they talk about films, I'm thinking, I'm imagining. You know, like when you open up a, a device and there's not a wire, it's like a, a, it's almost like a ribbon. You know, it's very thin metal, just like you see them in, in cell phones. Like I've changed the battery in my cell phone a few times and the, the conductors are, are um, they're not wires. They're like a metal, like a little flexible metal ribbon or plate. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think if those are if those are copper or maybe, I don't know, they might be some other kind of conductor, but maybe that's what they're talking about. They're, instead of wires, they're, they're like these ribbons. I don't know. Uh, a film, I, when I think of a film, I think of a coating. So I'm wondering, are these, are these oh, thin yeah. nanometer ribbons coated with something? I don't know. Or is oh, the no, niobium, is, is that? Well, maybe, they, maybe they are wire. Maybe they're just super, super small. I don't know. Hmm. The researchers, researchers found that niobium phosphide became a better conductor than copper at film thicknesses below 5 nanometers, even when operating at room temperature. At this size, copper wires struggle to keep up with rapid-fire electrical signals and lose a lot more energy to heat. Really high-dense this is a quote, really high-dense electronics need very thin metal connections, and if those metals are not conducting well, they're losing a lot of power and energy, said Eric Pop the PZE professor in the School of Engineering. 
a professor of electrical engineering and senior author on the paper, quote, better materials could help us spend less energy in small wires and more energy actually doing computation. What is a P's ye professor? Uh, that's probably uh, that's probably an honorable professor from way back, and they just started uh, putting that title on professors. Huh. He, the, the guy P's ye was probably really famous in that school, and they set aside a title for him for professors. Gotcha. Uh, many researchers have been working to find better conductors for nanoscale electronics, but so far the best candidates have have had extremely precise crystalline or crystalline structures, which need to be formed at a very high temp at very high temperatures. The niobium phosphide films made by Kahn and his colleagues are the first examples of non-crystalline or crystalline materials that become better conductors as they get thinner. Because the niobium phosphide films don't need to be single crystals, they can be created at lower temperatures. The researchers deposited the films at 400 degrees Celsius, pretty hot, uh, a temperature that is low enough to avoid damaging or uh, destroying existing silicon computer chips. Yeah, that is really hot. 400 Celsius? Yeah. That's really hot. Okay, although ni niobium phosphide films are a promising start, Pop and his colleagues don't expect them to suddenly replace copper in all computer chips. Copper is still a better conductor in thicker films and wires, but niobium phosphide could be used for the very thinnest connections, and it paves the way for research into conductors made of other topological semi-metals. The researchers are already looking into similar materials to see if they can improve niobium phosphide's performance. Pop and his team are also working on turning their niobium phosphide films into narrow wires for additional testing. They want to determine how reliable and effective the material could be in real world applications. So very interesting with these metals. Very yeah. interesting. And I mean, it sounds like they're maybe, you know, not just scratching the surface, but they're, they're just getting into this thing. So they got, they got a ways to go, but yeah, this is cool. Good stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's just going to make things lighter, right? I mean, yeah, less lighter. Lighter, definitely. Uh, right. More energy efficient, less heat dissipation. Dissipation. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Like you said, if it's working off of batteries, then um, or charging a battery or whatever, it'll. I just replaced my gaming laptop because uh, it uh, it was just heating up too fast, and I didn't realize I could get like a, a cooling pad to put it on. So, but I got a I got an AI gaming laptop, so I'm really pleased with that one. Doesn't heat up barely at all. A cooling pad? Cooling pad, yeah. The elders, the elders told me about this. Elder Richardson told me about cooling pad. I'm like, what? Really? So and I guess it's got fans and stuff that just, you know, just whirling when, when the heat starts getting up. It just, it goes. And and where do you get those? At the normal Geek Squad? Like Amazon. They range from like 40 bucks to 100, 150 bucks. Had I known about it, I probably would have stayed with that gaming. But I'm really happy with this gaming laptop. It's it's small. It's a lot smaller than the laptop we use for the show. Interesting. It doesn't so, heat up. So not to sound really stupid, but that thing just sits on top. Your your computer, your laptop just sits on top of that that uh, pad. Pad. And it cool. And it cools. It, you can press a button, or it can automatically do it, and just the fans come on and just start cooling um the uh the computer oh and it's got a thermostat on it oh that's pretty cool too so yeah all right yeah okay well this is a good topic all right folks thanks for joining us we'll see you in the morning take care everyone thanks